Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math. In our last series, we took a look at uh, calculating derivatives, which is one of the main topics in uh, Calculus 1, uh, cal calculating average rates of change. Um, today, average and instantaneous rates of change. Today, we're going to look at uh, anti-differentiation, which essentially is the reverse process of taking a derivative. So basically what it is, is given a function f of x, we want to find a big F of x such that the derivative uh, big F prime of x equals f of x. So just in other words, y equals big F of x would be a solution of the equation dy over dx equals f of x. Now reversing the process of uh, differentiation can be somewhat tricky in some cases depending on whether or not you have multiple functions, constants, what type of function is being uh, integrated. So another, another word for uh, anti-differentiation is integration. Um, the symbol for integration is this here, and that symbol is something that's going to be used constantly with anti-differentiation, and from here on in we will uh, refer to it as integration. So when you integrate a function f of x, you get uh, back a function f of x plus c. Now the reason it's, you have a uh, c there, that's a constant. So basically what happens is if you take the derivative of that function f of x plus c, you're going to be returned the function f of x, c drops out because it's just a constant. So when you have integ uh, integration with a constant times a function, that's just going to be uh, the constant times the integral of the function. And our uh, linearity of anti-differentiation uh, rule will tell us that if we have two functions uh, being multiplied by scalars and added or subtracted, we can actually break that into two separate integrals with the constants pulled to the outside. Now there are a couple rules uh, about differentiation to uh, keep in mind. So first of all, if we're differentiated, if we're given uh, the integral of a constant, such as 1 dx, it's just the derivative of x is just 1. And we have to make sure that we're adding a constant. So when we go ahead and take the derivative of this function here, we're returned with 1. Uh, another uh, interesting function to take a look at is 0. It's just a constant um, because when you take the uh, derivative of a constant c, it will just return 0. Uh, now another uh, rule we have for anti-differentiation is uh, the power rule, which states that if we have a function x to the p, where p does not equal negative 1, and this is going to be very important in a second when we take a look at the negative 1 case. So we have the integral of x to the p dx. p does not equal negative 1. It's just going to be this. Now if you can think of that in terms of what the power rule is for uh, derivatives, go ahead and take the derivative of this function. It's just 1 over p plus 1 times x to the p plus 1. Do our normal power rule. It's going to be p plus 1 times x to the p plus 1 minus 1, which is just x to the p all over p plus 1. Those cancel, and you see that that just yields uh, x to the p. So that's the case for a general p, but when we have p equals negative 1, well, we know that the uh, derivative of natural log of x is actually 1 over x. So the antiderivative of x to the negative 1, or 1 over x, is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of x plus, the, plus a constant. So that's what uh, the derivative, or excuse me, the uh, integral of 1 over x or x to the negative 1 is. 
Now we're going to take a look at just some basic examples uh, of anti-differentiation or integration um, without bounds and then later on we're going to take a look at definite integration. Um, in this case this might be referred to as indefinite integration. So the first function we're going to take a look at is integrate 7x cubed plus 3 square roots of x dx. So I'm going to go ahead and use the um, linearity of integration rule to go ahead and break this apart and uh, separate the constants to the outside. And I'm also going to change that square root of x to an x to the 1 half. So now we have two functions that we can just use uh, the power rule uh, for integration on. And this is going to become x to the fourth, remember p plus 1, over p plus 1. So it's going to be 1 fourth x to the fourth. You multiply it by 7, so it's 7 fourths x to the fourth. The other function is a little bit trickier to work with because uh, we have a function to the 1 half. So 1 half plus 1 is going to be uh, 3 halves. And then we're going to need to divide by 3 halves or multiply by 2 thirds. So we're going to do 3 times 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. Which just turns out to be 2x to the 3 halves. And our final answer is 7 over 4x to the 4 plus 2x to the 3 halves. Okay, and uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at one more example. Um, this time we're going to have a x to the negative 1 so we can see uh, how that might be dealt with, especially when it's multiplied by a constant. So this integral is 3 over x minus 1 plus 2x to the fifth plus 4 cube roots of x. Now instead of breaking this up into separate integrals, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and calculate it all as one, but know that this could be broken up into four separate integrals, one for each term, and then you could calculate it out that way. Now if we pulled the 3 out in front of the individual integral for 3 over x, uh, it would be 3 times the integral of 1 over x, which is just 3 times uh, the natural log of the absolute value of x. This 1, it's just a constant 1. Uh, the derivative of negative x is negative 1, so it's minus x. Now we have 2x to the fifth, so that's going to be 2 times the integral of x to the fifth, which is just 2x to the sixth over 6, or 1 third x to the sixth. And then we have 4 times x to the 1 third, pull out the 4, um, and then we have 4 integral of x to the 1 3rd dx, which is just 4 times x to the 4 thirds divided by 4 thirds, or time times uh, 3 out of 4, which is just going to be uh, 3x to the 4 thirds. You can see that if you take the uh, derivative of this, we have 4 thirds times 3x to the 1 3rd, which is just 4x to the 1 3rd. And of course, don't forget to add our constant. Uh, I made the mistake up here of not adding the constant to this function. Um, but with uh, indefinite integration, make sure you are always adding that constant. Um, so basically, this, this resource is a really good resource for uh, students who already have a strong basis in uh, integration, in integral calculus, calculus 2. Um, we strongly recommend uh, using this video as a resource uh, if you are in Calculus 2 or higher levels of calculus. Um, but please do be sure to uh, take a look at our uh, other integral calculus lectures by the author of our uh, calculus series, David Massey. Thank you for watching. For more math videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Or for additional resources, 
including affordable digital textbooks, please visit centerofmath.org.